What is this area? Huh? What is this place? Oh, not yai he wani hiski. Say that one more time. Not yai he wani hiski. Okay. Place of the talking rocks. Place of the talking rocks. Yeah, they're old petroglyphs. You can hardly see them now these need to be all clean so you can see them but these rocks around to there oh yeah you, you can kind of still see one on this one is from our old language i'm talking about our old language it's the same words that we have now but different symbols okay now does every rock have one or just a few of them no just there's right a few around, of the bigger ones. This one runs right around that way. <clears throat> so this is where you'd have a few of your ceremonies? Yeah, this was a very special place for us. <sighs> so just a little bit of walking down here. There's a lot of walking for a big guy and this old guy. An old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm super bummed out. I didn't get here. If I was probably like, what, a couple weeks earlier, the museum still would have been completely full or when did you empty it out? We emptied it right after we sold the property. Oh, okay. About two, almost two months ago. Now. Two months ago. Yeah. So <clears throat> that thing was full of a lot of stuff. That was really neat. Uh, so now we're just going to, he showed me, I, was, I took pictures so I could at least show you that. Just the old, just the old buildings on this property. That's really cool. And the smokehouse, the outhouse, and just the old house there. How old is that house? Do you know? Yeah, the original part of it's around 150 years old. Wow, 150. Yeah, that's the old part of it. Which is the big part? Uh-huh. Because the back was added on, right? That's right. We added it on. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Man. But the uh, old part originally had a big back section to it. Okay. And it wasn't, it sat empty for years and rotted down. <clears throat> oh, okay. So we built that onto it. But I liked it with just the old part of the house. Oh, it's pretty. <clears throat> and the old house is haunted. The old house is haunted? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my word. We even had the Ghostbusters come out here one time. You had a version of the Ghostbusters come out? Yeah. What for? Or like... What did, did they find out anything? Uh, they said, well, there's a little something. We didn't find a whole lot. Because when uh, you're looking for ghosts, they're going to stay away from you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was it's a fun thing. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's get up here. We'll talk, and I'll let, you, I'll, I'll let him introduce himself, and we'll go from there. Okay. So hang on, you were just telling me the story behind behind it. Now that's too good not to share. So okay, start over again. So what was the man's name who built the house? His name was Hughes. Hughes was his last name. We called him Mr. Hughes, and <clears throat> we even still have a picture of him on the old abstracts <laughs> from years and years ago. And the old part of the house is around 150 years old mm -hmm. when he, he built it. And he had a son and a daughter. And his wife died, and he married again and married a bad woman. And at that time, the well was... That metal, that metal casing there that I took a picture of, that's, just, the, that's where it's at. Had the boards thing. across the top of it. Yeah, that one right there. And the woman fixed the board so the boy would fall in and drown. Well, instead of him falling in and drowning, the little girl fell in and drowned. And she never told anyone till she was on her deathbed. And she confessed it. And that made Mr. Hughes so angry he could never leave. That's why his spirit was caught here in the old house. <clears throat> and so... Over the time, Mr. Hughes just created all kinds of problems in the old house. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it's haunted, him and his daughter. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And occasionally, the girl's bedroom was up there where you see the little window on top. Yeah. And you had, at that time, had to go out on the porch 
and go up the steps to go up to oh, her wow. bedroom. But after she had passed, you could hear her singing upstairs in her bedroom. Now, did you ever hear her singing? Well, <laughs> you want me to ruin the story. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway, that's a story of how the house is haunted. Okay. Cool. See, no, I, I couldn't. I knew if I if I got that little bit of a precursor that you, like, oh yeah, the house is haunted. I knew anybody watching this would be like, okay, I want more info. <laughs> so, okay, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jacob here with JC Ford. Uh, good to see you again. Like I said, I always do just random stuff here. Uh, so today I was actually finishing up uh, my final maintenance of the day and uh, come out here to the old friend of mine that it's I've uh, grown attached to with him and his property out here. I've been doing your maintenance for five years, probably. Yeah, it's been about <clears throat> five or six. Five probably. or six or seven, yeah. It's always a treat to come out here. Uh, he lives in Boyer County, which, which is where I grew up. Uh, I never knew this was out here. It's a little treasure trove of history and knowledge. Um, but I'll let him explain who he is. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because he's actually getting ready to move um, for reasons we won't really go into. It's just a whole lot of fun, political, hobba jabba. Uh, but I just want to focus on who this man is and uh, what he represents and who he represents out here. And I'll let you take it away. All what's, right. your, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Paul White Eagle. In our language, it's Gula Funega Awahili. And that was given to me at birth. I'm now 85 years old. And so I've had that name for a long time. But I also have an English name that I have to use for legal reasons. And I am with the Ani Yoia tribe of Native Americans. And that is the real name of the Cherokee. The word Cherokee was a derivative given to us by the Europeans. And we still maintained our traditional culture and our traditional language and name. And that's who we are. And we actually ended up in this part of the country when the Trail of Tears came through. Our people separated from the main body of the tribe as they crossed the Mississippi River and hid in the swamps of southeast Missouri. And that's where we were for many years. And then some of our people moved west into New Mexico. Then as time passed, it was in our ancient prophecies that we were to return here where we had crossed the Mississippi River. And so that's why I'm back here in southern Missouri. And we have uh, had this little bit of land out here, our tribal land, which we now are losing or moving away from. But anyway, we've had a, a wonderful time, beautiful ceremonies. We still keep all of our traditional dances, our medicine ceremonies, everything that we are, we still maintain that. And that's basically who I am. That, I don't know yeah. if that tells you very much or not. Oh, it, yeah, it tells, it tells plenty. Now, I know you've had, every time I come out here, you always got some kind of different stories. I know some of them have been just where people have uh, disagreed with you or disagreed obviously that's, that's been something that's been a thorn at your side at times some people that disagree with you or don't believe you are who you guys are but what it comes down to to me personally there's things I don't even agree with because of course I'm I'm raised Christian and I know the Christian beliefs are different different from the Aniawea I said that right right correct I, I focused it I finally figured I got it down I got it down pretty quick I struggled but our beliefs differ. But my point is, the, the whole point behind it is, if you disagree or not, there's still a ton of culture 
that was here. And still a ton of culture that was at the, he's got a museum down there, it's in his old house. And he brought a lot of that stuff here. Not a ton of people knew about it, but the ones that did, not a lot of people would come out here very often. They were missing out on a lot of cool stuff. I actually, years ago, brought my family out here uh, to check out what they had and all the stuff from the past. And uh, it was a really, it was a really neat tour. And I was hoping to do that even in the future with my kids, just so they can see it. Uh, you know, all the different kind of stuff he had, and he is. Uh, just filled with all kinds of knowledge about this stuff. So, I mean, whether or not you agreed with, you know, who he is or where he's from or he is Cherokee or he is Aniwea, you know, whatever you want to call it, that to me, that doesn't matter. It does to a point, but it's just how much culture that he's actually kept up. <clears throat> and just like in a lot of other places, one of the things that's bit you guys is the fact that there's no one coming up from the younger ages and no, no one's really interested in it that more. And it's just, that's something that's really plagued us a lot of different uh, genres of people and different kinds of people is there's no tradition being carried on anymore. It's all just falling to the wayside. We're forgetting where we came from uh, to remember where we came from. Cause they always say, if you don't remember your past, you'll forget it and you got to relearn it right. the hard way. <clears throat> um, so I really have loved uh, coming out here and seeing all this stuff. Anything you wanted to say what I just said? <laughs> well, I think you covered a lot of territory, and that's good. I would like to also state, when we look at the differences in our beliefs, if you really get to examining a true Native culture, I'm talking about a true, I'm not talking about people who play in it. Mm -hmm. But a true Native <clears throat> culture, it's not that different from your beliefs. Right. It's very much the same, only we follow a lot of natural uh, things, you know, that take place on the earth and seasons and those type of things. And it's, it's pretty comfortable for them to even exist side by side. Mm -hmm. They can do it. Oh, I, I think that's one of the things I've always just kind of loved about it is just, you, I think you are, and even my older generation of my own family, they were a lot more in touch with the earth just because a lot of older families, they farm the earth. Tons of families now. There's there's still a few people that farm, but a lot of people don't have to. Like, they don't. we don't have to make our own food to survive anymore. And I think that's one thing even you have, you kept up with a lot with in your childhood and, uh, did you ever have a farm here on this property? Did you ever do any kind of crop growing? No, not here. Not here. Okay. But I grew up on a farm okay. where we had to raise our own food. We cut our own wood for fuel for the winter time. Uh, and you we, had to do that last year, didn't yes. you? Know, or two years ago. <laughs> his uh, his unit here, it cut off on him. He had to spend uh, like a week or better cutting his own, getting his own wood and cut, keeping the fire going at night. <laughs> and that's good, too, because I love a good fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they say when you get old, you look for a good fire. <laughs> and anyway, but yeah, that's right. actually uh, how I was raised. We didn't have electricity. Uh, no running water, nothing. It was very <laughs> primitive. But a lot of other people were raised the same way mm -hmm. in this part of the country. Oh, it was the only way to live. Like yeah. it was either, it, back then, it was either you do it or you die. <laughs> and that's right. You did it because you wanted to live. <laughs> and I, I feel, I, I wish uh, the culture, culture nowadays is just busy, busy, busy. And I'm in it too. There's always a part of me that longs to know more about how to do that stuff. It's just making priority for me to actually sit down and do it. And I think that's one thing I always lack in is I think a lot of people are in the same boat. We're too busy with our lives and everything else that, I mean, if something ever did happen, we'd be in trouble. <clears throat> that's one of the problems with modern society. We are so involved. We have mm -hmm. to be involved in order to survive in this world today. And we don't have the time to find the natural ways and do the things that are good for us yeah. and for our families. But uh, 
we will survive. <laughs> As I was telling him on our sign that we had up, it said Nahiyu Nagwa Nigo Hila. And that means then, now, and forever. <laughs> we will go. survive. I love it. And I love this area. And sad to see you go. Uh, moving to the big land of Cape. So you'll be in the concrete territory now. You'll be moving into an apartment. But uh, I like coming out here. It's always been fun. But I'm sure I'll see you again around there. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for sitting down and just kind of talking just for, I think it's just 10 minutes. Just uh, kind of sharing a little bit about yourself here just so everybody has a uh, just an idea of who Chief Paul White Eagle is. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> so We shall. Good, good working with you. As we say, Gila, we don't say goodbye in our language. We believe we will meet again. I like that. And if you want to say goodbye to one person, Dona Dagohai, it's two or more, <laughs> it's do da da go e. And if you can't say that, we shorten it to gila. Gila. And somebody said, well, what does gila mean? It means later, dude. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I love you. See ya.